Hello, this is Nancy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I decided to make a miniature series and this first one is the living room. The first project is going to be the fireplace and the walls. I got the idea for the pyre fireplace from Melissa at All Things Crafty. She made a larger version of this, but I didn't have room for, for the larger one, so I made a small one. You're going to need two blocks by two blocks for the sides. And you're also going to need a two blocks by two blocks um, for the horizontal piece of the fireplace. Once we get that centered there on the, in the center for the fireplace, we're going to glue the side walls to it. Then we'll wait for that to dry and continue to the next step. I'm using the quart size painter sticks from Home Depot and cutting them down to the width of the fireplace completely. And that's going to be what we're going to put our stones on. You're going to cut down the stir sticks to size to fit the front of the fireplace. And remember, this is just for inspiration. You can copy mine. You can make your own, make it bigger, make it smaller. This is just um, some ideas. I use the paint stir sticks also for the bottom of the fireplace and you're going to probably need to cut one down to fit the bottom there. If this is a little too fast, um, a found out from a subscriber that you can slow down the video by clicking on the gear and you can do it a half time or a quarter time or, or any, any which way you want to, to slow it down. I just used a freestanding fireplace idea for this one, where you can make one that has built-in bookshelves on the side, or you know, a fluted um, top. It's a lot, a lot of ideas out there. This reminds me of a time um, when we were little. My dad made us a Barbie sized dollhouse from scratch. And he also built the furniture inside from scratch. 
so it brings back nice memories For the top of the fireplace, I used a paint stir stick. I think I'm not sure if it's the the gallon or the five gallon one. It holds uh, the whole width of one fits nicely on top. And then I also did a three by two to give it a top. Um, I guess a lip or something towards the top. I'm hope I'm, I'm explaining that right. I missed a step here. Um, I glued the white stones from Dollar Tree with Mod Podge onto the front of the fireplace. I missed that step, sorry. Once the stones are dry, you're gonna put another layer of Mod Podge on top so they don't fall off. And then I'm using some, some gray and um, black for, to paint the stones. For the actual fireplace um, section inside, I'm using it all black. The wood portion of the fireplace, I'm using the Antique Wax by Wa Waverly. I cut a piece of foam board for the walls of the living room, and um, this is my my size that I'm, I cut it, and I should have made it a little bit wider, but you'll see that um, in, in the rest of the video where I change the floor. But I'm using also the paint stir sticks here, and I'm cutting them down to make it like ship black, ship lap. I used the Waverly white paint to paint the shiplap and I give it a, at least two coats. This is where I cut another piece of foam board for the floor and this flooring will be changed um, towards the end of the, uh, the video because I made the living room a little bit wider or deeper, whichever way you want to go. Here I'm using the Waverly paint and elephant and mineral and also the black or ink. I, I lay a few colors down then mix and match and give you some more depth to the rocks. You can also um, get some scrapbook paper um, that has a bricks on it and just cover the fireplace with that. 
or make it larger stones you can make anything that you want on the eggs more, maybe more shiplap but smaller than the walls so I can decorate this living room per, um, by season I added a magnet above the, the fireplace so I can switch out the wreath um, for every season Now onto the second piece of furniture, the bookshelf. You're going to need six sets of two and four sets of two by two. Here I'm doing the six sets of two and we'll push them, push them to the side and let them dry. Now we're going to glue the two by twos. Try to get them as even as possible. And these are gonna be the, the horizontal shelves of the bookshelf. Now once all the pieces are dry, we're going to get one of the 2x2s two twos on the bottom and get one of the, the, two, the six sets of two and glue it on the top of the 2x2. Two two. Then get another 2x2 two two and put it on top of that. And continue to until you get all the shelves on. I'm designing this as I go so the assembly didn't work out the first way. So I got on my square and I started laying them out this way. While it's in the drying process, I took out my square again and made sure that both sides were um, square. Now 
Once it's all dry, I'm taking my Ryobi sander and giving it a nice run through to make sure that's all nice and smooth. And then I'm using again the antique wax to paint the shelf. third piece of furniture I'm making a couch you see on top of the screen there I made a couch before and it came out too small because I wasn't paying attention to the scale of the of the project so I had to redo it again so for the couch you're gonna need six sets of three and three sets of four so you're gonna glue here the three sets of three together and for the back you're gonna do the same thing Now once you have the bottom and the back dry, you're going to add the arms, which is two blocks high. And we're going to cut an, um, around the edge towards the front. You'll see um, when I slow it down a bit later. Now we're going to do the legs of the couch. We're going to do a one by three in a one by three for, for the back and then for the base is it going to be also a three by three and this is where you're going to glue the one by threes to and then attach the bottom of the couch the one by three on the base you're actually going to have to cut one of the pieces down to size to fit on the couch. I use my cutoff saw to cut it off, but you can use your miter shears. Now once the base is dry, you're going to glue the couch onto the base. I use the lightweight spackling to um, cover all the gaps on the, on the couch. Here is where I'm marking up the, the rounded edge for the front of the couch. I'm using a glue stick and I'm just um, tracing it out. And then I'll use my RLB sander to sand that down. I've been working on this so long, I forgot to show you the how I add the faux leather from Dollar Tree to the couch. You just cut it down to the width of the couch and then I used Fabri-Tac. Fabri -Tac to glue it down. You can make this couch any style you want. Instead of the leather, you can put some floral on it. Um, instead of the antique Waverly wax, on the woodring part, you can paint it black or any color you want. And of course, every couch needs some comfiness. So I'm cutting here some plaid fabric to make a pillow and a blanket.
for the pillow, I'm using Steam Steam to put around the edges to um, glue them together. You can use hot glue, you could actually sew it together. But this project was too small for me to bring my sewing machine out to do it. But I will one day. Now to make the fireplace Christmassy, we're going to be cutting out some stockings. I made a paper um, template and then I'm tracing it on some felt. For the blanket, I used some pinking shears to, so that way I didn't have to worry about um, sewing it and giving it a nice edge. And now on to our next piece of furniture, the coffee table and side table. For the top of the table, you're going to need three sets of three. And then once those three sets are done, uh, are glued together, we're going to turn it and add the table legs. We're going to cut some three pieces down to three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to make a U-shaped at the bottom. I'll show you. Um, it's coming up. Here you can see where I'm gluing the legs to the table. It's like a U shape on the bottom on either side. Making sure that it's even on both sides with my ruler. Okay, we set the coffee table to the side to dry. Now we want to work on the side table. We're going to need three pieces for the top. And then we're going to cut four pieces down to one inch for the legs. Again, you can paint these any colors you want. I'm doing the tops of the tables with the Waverly Wax and the legs in ink. For the bookshelf, I made some books using different sizes of the of the tumbling tower blocks and glue them together and painted them different colors and the, with a white pen i added some you know squigglies to make it look like some writing for the coffee table i made a mini 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 micro tear tray i used two circles and um cut the vinyl to look like a peppermint and then added a little dowel in between and then some frames on the shelf and some other um, decorations. So you could decorate it any which way you want. What would you like me to try next? What micro, mini, whatever would you like me to try next? I'm having fun with these. So if you're liking this, come back for more micro minis. Share with your friends. Like comment below what furniture would you put in your living room until next time be brave be strong and create stay tuned for some pictures of the final project